welcome back lovely people nuclear waste that sticky subject first of all let's just go back in history and look at the optimistic time of nuclear power when we saw things like this an atomic energy power plant has already proved feasible the future supplying of electric power to entire cities is far from impossible we certainly let that genie out of the bottle. But the overly optimistic viewpoint on nuclear power continues to this day. Watch this. Nuclear energy is one of the cleanest, most efficient, and most available sources of power on Earth. To generate one kilowatt hour of energy, the amount an American household consumes in 48 minutes, nuclear power plants only emit 12 grams of carbon dioxide. I have to say that that channel did go on to explain the dangers of nuclear waste, but their introduction to me says a lot. I have a very, very smart wife, Dorothy, Mrs. H. And we were talking about the term half-life. Dorothy has spent a lot of her life working in healthcare, and she says, Oh yeah, half-life. That's a term where drugs, after a certain length of time, become half as potent. I went, oh yeah, well that's what we hear about in the nuclear industry. You're always turn it, hearing this term, you know, the half-life of uranium, the half-life of plutonium in thousands of years, and the half-life of some things in a very short time. But I don't really understand it. So she explained it. And this is what it really is. And I didn't understand this at all. And maybe it's badly reported in the media. So, half-life. The half-life of something is when it becomes half as potent or half of the radiation has decayed. All right. It doesn't mean that, say, it's a half-life of 10 years. It doesn't mean in 20 years it's zero. No, that's the point. So after 10 years, it becomes half. After 20 years, it becomes a quarter. <laughs> after 40, 30 years, it becomes 6.25. So in fact, to take something which, the time that something becomes safe or isn't giving out any radiation, isn't double the published half-life, it's way longer. So for example, let's talk about plutonium. The half-life of plutonium is 24,000 years. That just means in 24,000 years, it's half as dangerous as it was when it was first made. That doesn't mean that in 48,000 years, it's over. It means it's now a quarter of, of it is still as dangerous. So in fact, the long tail of half-lives go on a very, very long time. And then the other thing that a smart viewer told me is, okay, so a lot of media go, the half-life of plutonium is 24,000 years, that's really terrible. But in fact, the half-life of something much more radioactive might be only two years or five years or 20 years. And that's because it's far more radioactive and it's decaying faster. And it's the decay process which produces the uh, radiation which we need to be shielded from. I think it's worth talking about doses and what's actually fatal. Uranium, when it's first coming out of a nuclear reactor, produces 10,000 rem, which is a unit of radioactivity per hour. To put that into context, a fatal dose for a human is 500 an hour. So that all aside, what I really wanted to make is a film about nuclear waste and storage because it brings up some amazingly interesting scientific, engineering and sociological issues and even art is mentioned. So you've probably heard of Yucca Mountain. Here it is. This is a Nevada underground storage facility that has been built many years ago to store mainly high-level nuclear waste. First of all, you have to know that all, this is 100%, not some, all of nuclear waste made in power stations, nuclear power stations, is currently stored at the nuclear power stations. There are no civil nuclear storage facilities anywhere on planet Earth. 
the Navy dump it in the sea. That's another issue, and we'll discuss that in detail later. But the long-term storage of nuclear waste does not exist. No facility has been approved, and we need one. But it raises some interesting issues. Obviously, the number one issue is not in my backyard. But in fact, if we could store nuclear waste underground, deep underground, in certain stable bedrock, it would be hidden away from uh, us and would be relatively safe unless somebody dug it up. And that's the issue. So Yucca Mountain is just fascinating because they did a survey to think about the future. And this is how it goes. So they predict that for the next 100 years, they could have armed guards, signs in English, and protect the facility from people digging it up. But in the next 1,000 years, they predict that they could have Signs still in English, but that might become unreadable. And then graphical signs like the skull and crossbones. And also these ideas of warning people away from the area in uh, just by graphical symbols. And sculptors have come up with these ideas of spikes and a black hole and other things. And even cartoons. This is in a thousand years. But the real issue is, how are you going to protect this Yucca Mountain, say, in the 10,000-year timescale? And uh, nobody knows. So, in Finland, they have a completely different idea. What they're going to do is, first of all, they've got some very old, very stable bedrock, and they've tunneled down hundreds of feet underground, and they're going to bury the Finnish or Scandinavian nuclear waste in this underground facility. And it's going to be sealed up, and it's going to be landscaped with no apparent sign of a nuclear waste dump. Trees, nice rolling hills, no skull and crossbones, no signs in Finnish, English, no warnings, nothing, because they want the human race in the future not to know and to forget it. But they have a problem, and this problem is fantastic, and they're having to deal with it right now. And the problem is, I know where it is. I've just told you there's a site in Finland. You can go and Google it. So you can Google where the site is. It's in newspapers. It's in TV. News crews have been down there. How are they going to destroy the electronic, internet, and other media record that this place exists? Because a very smart future person might find an ancient newspaper and go, ooh, buried treasure. And the whole buried treasure thing is worth thinking about. There was a civilization that built a structures that they didn't want anybody in the future to go into, and that was the pyramids. And they pretended there was curses, they built them very strong, and there was no obvious doors because they wanted to protect the people buried in the middle of them uh, against tomb robbers. But it didn't work. I mean, people buried, literally, there are tomb robbers that buried underneath pyramids and came up, and because they were thought there's gold and silver and treasure inside these pyramids. The same thing is going to happen in the future. If there's a big steel door that says keep out in the side of a mountain and we have forgotten the significance of what's in there because this is in the future, somebody is going to dig in and uncage the dragon because the truth is down there. Mm -hmm.